God made us, one of each of us, so unique that no one else is quite like we are. We're better than a one-of-a-kind snowflake. Comparing ourselves with others just immobilizes and stops us from going forward or doing something new. We must not let the devil intimidate us into a corner or deceive us by making us think we aren't as good as somebody else. That's so diminishing. You know, I've had it happen in my life too. Many times. <laughs> we must not let the devil do that. God bless sister fruitful and brother achievement. Wonderful. But we're all the same in that we're all loved equally by God. We each have different responsibilities, but we each have something to bring to the table. If we can be tricked into comparing ourselves with others, it will make us feel worthless. That's for sure. And debilitated. That's how the enemy keeps us from even trying to do anything for God. People with focus. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. This was a horrible event to come home to. Their city was destroyed and their families were gone. What was the crocus in this situation? David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength to weep anymore. David himself was greatly distressed and his own men were talking about stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. He turned his eyes and his hope on God. He didn't focus on the terrible circumstances he found himself in. He knew his only source and hope was the great Jehovah God. So he prayed, and God said to pursue the enemy, and they recovered everything. When we're in a desert experience and life is dry and empty and desolate, what are we going to focus on? It's a challenge, for sure. It's a challenge. Moses saw a burning bush and focused in on why the bush was not consumed. That's in Exodus 3, verse 2. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. His whole life changed because of focus, his focus. When the woman with the issue of blood came behind Jesus, she was intent on just touching the hem of his garment. There was a huge crowd all around him, and she wasn't supposed to be among people because of her condition, but she was completely focused on the hem, on the man, and on receiving her healing. Her whole life changed because of her focus. And she, said, she kept saying, if I just can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Let's touch the hem of his garment today when we pray at the end and receive what we need. He loves you so much. He does love you. I have another booklet called The Ultimate Pursuit, which is all about God's love for you. And if you'd like one of those, just write me at marykeen at q.com and request the book. But be sure and put your address in. The Ultimate Pursuit. It's about God's love for you. Okay. Zacchaeus was a wealthy chief tax collector in Jericho who really wanted to see Jesus. And he was a short little man with determination, so he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed into a sycamore tree. He could have looked at the tree and thought, Hmm, big tree. This is a stupid idea. But guess what? His effort and persistence paid off because he didn't dwell on that or focus on how short he was. When Jesus saw him, he invited himself for dinner, and that day, Zacchaeus, his whole life was changed because of his focus. Before Elijah slaughtered the prophets of Baal, God told him that rain was coming to the drought-worn drought -worn land of Israel. 1 Kings 18, 1, verse 41. 
It had been three years with no rain because of sin in the land. And Elijah climbed to the top of a mountain and prayed. And he told his servant, go and look toward the sea. So the servant did, but he saw nothing and told Elijah. Seven times, Elijah said, go back. You know why Elijah said that? Because his focus was on the promise God gave him, and he was expecting rain to come, and it did. Hallelujah. Do you know that this is the time of latter rain? And it says in the Bible, ask me for rain in the time of latter rain. Oh, Lord, rain on us, rain on us, we pray in Jesus' name. In Luke 7, 37, a woman brought an alabaster box of ointment to anoint the feet of Jesus because of her intense and lavish love for him. She could have focused on the fact that she was a sinner and not wanted in the Pharisee's house. Everybody seemed to know who she was. Would guilt and condemnation stop her? Or would she focus on the one she had heard about, the sinless Son of God? who had compassion and forgiveness for people like her and really for everyone. Somehow she got into the house and stood behind the master weeping because she loved him so greatly, washing his feet with her tears because of her devotion and submission. She was as broken as the alabaster box she brought and as poured out in lavish love as the fragrant perfume she gave. She kissed his feet because of her affection and reverence toward him. And she anointed them with the ointment of her worship. She was rewarded for her devotion, her focus, and because she came to him in faith. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews eleven six. Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame because of the joy that was set before him. That joy was us. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was tormented with the enduring horror of the thought of being separated from his father, so much so that he sweat drops of blood, but he was totally focused on doing the will of his father. What about in our own lives? We've all had times of intense focus. Each time I was pregnant, I began to prepare for the day that the baby would be born. I knew there would be nine months of change in my body. I was aware that at some point my body would stretch and grow in ways I never thought possible. And when labor came, my focus was severely tested. But the baby was coming. Yay! My focus was on holding that precious life in my arms, and I knew it would all be worthwhile. Let's run the race. Let's run with race the patient let's run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews twelve verse one. The word race comes from the Greek word A G O N agon, from which we get the word agony. Hmm. The runners in that day would keep their eyes on the judge at the front of the stadium. We each have a unique race which is not always so easy to run in life, but we know we need to stay focused in order to finish the race. Illness, pain, and sorrow may come, and shutdowns. But we know we need to stay focused in order to finish the race. With debts, we have debts piled high on our desks, but we can make the choice to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is our prize, our goal, our model. And when we magnify him, our problems seem to diminish. It's like what someone said about not looking at the size of the problem, but looking at the size of our God. The sign may say, don't walk on the grass. And everybody looks at the grass and wants to walk on it. If we're constantly trying not to sin in certain areas of our life, it may it seems to draw us back to that very weakness to do it again. But what does the Bible say? To present our bodies to God, to yield to him, to put on the characteristics and attitude of Jesus Christ. When we make the decision to do that, it settles in our minds and strengthens our focus. We need to get our eyes off ourselves and bless someone else. Boy, this is a real truth. 
when you're hurting, find someone else that's hurting. Send them a card, pray for them, give them a call. It will really help you. Especially then, look at Jesus. When his cousin John the Baptist was brutally murdered by Herod's men, Jesus went to a desert place alone. Yet a great multitude followed him, so he healed the sick among them because he was so moved with compassion. Later, when the Pharisees said Herod would kill him, he simply said that he would continue healing and doing the work God sent him to do. That was his focus. We don't ignore a lack or deny problems. We face them head on and recognize them for what they're worth. But we refuse to let circumstances control us. We're not victims. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. You're not a victim. We face them head on and recognize them for what they're worth, but we refuse to let con circumstances control us, dominate us, or dictate our future. We consider Jesus who endured, lest we be wearied and faint in our minds. The Word of God is what frames our f future. Wow. The Word of God frames our future. Do you know who you are in Him? You're the righteousness of God in Christ if you have received Jesus into your heart. You're accepted in the beloved. He loves you. You're seated in heavenly places with him. He has blessed you, blessed you, blessed you. We consider Jesus who endured lest we be wearied and faint in our minds. We look through the eyes of faith like God does and see the solution and the way to get there. What does the Bible say about our situation? Through faith in God and the right focus, we can run the race set before us. A thankful heart. An attitude with gratitude from the heart is the kind of focus that will bring entrance into the world where God is. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Psalm 100 verse 4. Thanksgiving will sharpen our focus like nothing else. You know what? During this time, we need to think of the Thing, the many things that we're grateful for. You can get a page, get several pieces of paper and start writing down what you're thankful for. Like, I'm thankful I'm alive. I'm thankful I have blue eyes <laughs> instead of brown eyes. Brown eyes are great, but I'm thankful for my eyes. I'm thankful I have a cat, that I have children and a husband, a family. Whatever it is you're thankful for, begin to enumerate those things and thank the Lord for those things. And you'll find your heart growing and swelling with joy. You will. Thanksgiving will sharpen our focus like nothing else. It will clean the lenses on our eyes and wash the crustiness on our hearts so that we will see and perceive things differently than if we were not thankful. We can gratefully acknowledge what God has done for us and give him the praise and honor that is due him, or we can pridefully focus on all the stuff we don't have and think that we deserve. Thanksgiving bows and humbly proclaims God's goodness in the midst of despair, desperation, darkness, and gloom. Things change when we thankfully focus on God and his word. And our whole life can change because of focus. Wow. That's amazing, the power of focus. The word of God is a light that shines in a dark place. 2 Peter 1.19 It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119.105 When we're in a dark place, our natural inclination is to gravitate to light and follow it until we find our way out. When we can't see anything because of the, the darkness, we turn on the light. We don't focus on how dark it is or continue to try to see where we know we can't. We just turn on the light and open the, or open the curtains. We can change focus, our focus, about a lot of things when we begin to see things through God's eyes by reading and doing his word. Why should we let someone else's garbage ruin our day? Like, remember the beginning of the book? Focus on the crocus. Focus on what God has done for you. God created that little flower 
as the first sign of spring to give us hope for the future. There are more flowers ahead, more sunshine, more balmy, breezy days to follow. He produced life because he is life itself. And he will fulfill the desires of our hearts as we continue to keep our eyes on him and do what he says to do. Let's focus on the cross of Jesus Christ and what he did for us. I hope this has encouraged you. There's a little personal note at the end of the book. Let's read this. Perhaps you've read this book and you feel like your life is out of focus. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ personally. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We can't earn salvation or make ourselves good enough for heaven. Jesus paid the price for us when he died on the cross for our sins. He's knocking at the door of your heart right now. Would you let him in? When you ask him to come into your heart and life, it will begin a relationship with him that is personal and meaningful, and you will receive eternal life. It's that simple. If you would like that, please pray with me right now. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins and help me to change my focus on what matters in life. I turn my life over to you and ask you to live your life through me. As God the Father raised you from the dead, may he raise me to newness of life and make me brand new inside. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Amen. That's wonderful. It's a wonderful day for you. Be encouraged that Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. Find a good place to worship or online. Find people that know Jesus. Get to know him through his word. And let's have a final prayer regarding your circumstances right now. Because no matter what they are, the Lord can turn the circumstances around. And he will. But let's ask him to help us to refocus, to re. We, we need to get our minds renewed with the word. That will really help us. A song, the word, a friend, someone who can share, especially now if you're born again. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we pray for this one. We thank you, Lord, for your help. We need help. You said you're a present help in the time of need. And we need help. We need we ask you to help us focus. Help us focus on what's important. Sometimes we think this is important or that is and we're driven, but we need to know what do you want? What do you want today? What can what can please you? What what is our focus today? We just let all these anxieties and worries go. We will not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. We receive your peace. And I just speak peace to this one peace and rest. And we thank you for health and healing. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your love and help them to know you through your spirit, through your word, how much that you love them. Help them to receive your love today and to receive a great, bright, and shining focus that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.